Thanks, thanks, uh, Almudena, and uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, we didn't have a chance to uh, to see uh, and to take part to the conference this morning, uh, but uh, I think there will be uh, most likely a link between uh, this uh, conference conference of this morning and the conference of uh, and this small talk uh, we we have uh, today, and most likely. Uh, some link also with uh, with the conference by brother uh, Emmanuel Pisani about uh, the link between uh, identity, uh, dialogue, and conflict. So for this afternoon, uh, what I I propose you I suggest is to to go to discover to to try to reflect to have a time of per personal reflection uh, concerning this. Um, is theme of identity, and uh, in the tradition of uh, living stones, we have this um, possibility uh, to uh, try to reflect and maybe pray using uh, a piece of art. And uh, as a Parisian, I had many opportunities and uh, to go uh, to the. Um, to the, to the church of uh, Saint-Sulpice, which is really uh, in the heart of Paris, and that acts uh, currently as the, uh, which is one of the biggest church in Paris, and that is used for ordinations or, and things like that, especially uh, while uh, Notre Dame is still to be rebuilt. And uh, so we will talk, start with this uh, piece of art uh, that is uh, Le Combat de Delacroix, Le Combat de Jacob de Delacroix, with this, uh, the wrestling of, Jack, of uh, Jacob with the angel by uh, Delacroix. And, uh, and then, well, we'll try to see what we can uh, think and reflect in our own lives about this theme of uh, identity as uh, a vocation. And what does it tell us? about uh, identity as a vocation and maybe what it can what we can do also during a personal time based on this uh, small presentation we i will keep an eye uh, on what happens in the conversation so if there are questions or if i'm not clear which which is totally possible yes uh, feel free just to drop a message and uh, i see whether I can or not uh, give you some, um, some answers or clarifications. All right. Up. Um, all right, so let's move to, to the piece of art. I'm just gonna do some share of my screen if I manage to do it. But it's gonna be all right up. Yeah, so typically people should be able to see my screen. Yeah, I see a scene of uh, yet, yeah, signs of yes, so which is, so let's go. Um, just just be, before starting, uh, I, I'm supposed to, uh, there is no French translation, right? Uh, I, I am supposed to do a quick a quick thing in, in, fr in French just to, to make it sure. Thanks, thank you so much. And donc juste en, en, en deux mots, hein, on, on va partir pour cet après-midi sur une, une présentation de la, de la, du combat de Jacob de la Croix qui se trouve dans l'église Saint-Sulpice. Et euh, l'idée, c'est effectivement, donc de, à partir de, ce, de cette œuvre d'art et d'un petit commentaire que, que je vais en faire, ouvrir à quelques pistes de réflexion sur ce thème de l'identité euh, en tant que vocation. Et euh, ensuite, bah, pouvoir ouvrir à quelques pistes de travail personnel, un peu de homework, euh, voilà, pour, euh, pour le temps qui, qui, va, qui nous va. Voilà, et donc du coup, à chaque fois, je mettrai une petite, euh, je résumerai rapidement en français ce que j'ai pu dire euh, en anglais. Voilà. So, we are looking at... We are looking at... Alexandre, hello. Just, hey. I'm going to do the, the first activity in the city, so I'm going to leave you and to thank you for the afternoon, but I do the first activity, not the second. So, uh, but je fais la première activité dans la ville. Donc, okay. pour ça que je vous laisse. Voilà. Bon après-midi. Awesome. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, so, 
Um, okay, so what we can see here is that uh, it's one one wall of uh, of a chapel, which is when in, which is located in the right side of uh, of the of the church of Saint Sulpice. As soon as you enter, and this shirt and this chapel is dedicated to the angels. So you have one a painting of uh, Jacob wrestling with an angel, and uh, which one I'm, I'm going to talk about. Uh, in front of it, you have Eliodor that is being uh, beaten out of the temple. So it's a, it is, it's a scene that comes from uh, the book of Maccabee. And, uh, and, it's, and it's how one invader goes into the temple to take um, its content and, uh, and, and suddenly appear, uh, appears one man and with, with also three other people that start to, uh, to fight with him. Yeah. And, the, and the last painting in, in, this, uh, in this chapel, and uh, I think, I think, I think I can do something. Just trying to try to share something else. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to work. Yeah. Yes. All right. And I'm going to reduce this. Voila. And uh, I think you can have this. No, we don't. We don't have it yet. But uh, yeah, it's it's, it's another. It's an, it's an it's a painting about that theme of uh, of an angel fighting. Uh, this, this invader and the last one is uh, the archangel Michael, uh, also with the um, with uh, yeah yeah fighting against evil. Yeah, so it's it, the whole theme of the chapel is about angels, and the angels can be understood also as this action of God, this concrete action of God in our lives. And uh, for the painting that inter interests us, it's this one. Yeah, so I'm just going to show the other one up, up, up. So it's uh, I, I don't know if you, uh, if you if you have an idea, but this uh, Eugène de la Croix there was uh, there, there was an exhibition in in Le Louvre uh, in Paris a couple of years ago, and what was really impressive was to see the amount of paintings that he that he that he has that he has that he had done. He was painting really fast, uh, really quickly, really fast. And, uh, but we, and during what, every year it was delivering a lot of paintings. But this chapel that was uh, finished at the end of his uh, and at the end of his life, it took him at least ten years. So maybe it, go, it gives us some information, or it makes us think also about this uh, this thing of um, how important it was for him. So in this painting, we are we are seeing a, a biblical scene, which is uh, the wrestling of Jacob with the angel. So maybe uh, if we get closer, yeah, up, we see here uh, the angel on the left and the right, uh, Jacob, in a, in a really in a, in a, in a natural uh, landscape, and uh, we can see with the light here that is quite pink. That we are getting close to do, to to dawn, and uh, on the right side we have the livestock of uh, Jacob. So just to put things in context, J Jacob. I don't know if you had a chance to to read that, but he stole uh, the benediction, the blessing, and the birthright of his elder uh, brother, and uh, so and at some point in his life. He is, he is going to meet with his brother after many adventures. And what the Bible says is that during that night, he couldn't sleep. He was extre extremely stressed out. What he, did is, what he did is that he sent his livestock away and tried to, um, tried to spend the night in order to, to see uh, his, uh, his people in, uh, to, in order to see his, his brother surrounded by his life, livestock later in the morning. And it is during that specific night that uh, the Bible said someone or a man fought with him during the whole night. So just one thing to, to say that this, this, this image of, a, of an angel is something that has been put uh, later on, but technically, the, the, the biblical text only says, only talks about a man. And at the end, that man says, well, you, uh, you, 
he, he, uh, Jacob learns that it, it was uh, it was uh, God that he that he fought with, and uh, and he receives and he receives a new name. Yeah, and uh, we can say also that during this uh, during this fight, uh, Jacob uh, got his hip dislocated, but even though he kept fighting. And the iconography, as I said, traditionally depicts this, uh, this, uh, this unknown man as an angel. Um, donc, juste en français rapidement, hein, c'est une scène qu trouve, qui se trouve à Saint-Sulpice, Jacob qui se, qui se bat contre un ange, c'est le titre de la croix, dans le texte biblique, on parle plutôt d'un homme qui se, qui se bat avec, euh, avec Jacob. Jacob a, a volé euh, la, la bénédiction de son père, il a, il a volé le, le droit d'aînesse euh, de, son, de, de son frère, et euh, il lui arrivait un certain nombre d'aventures euh, euh, quand il était euh, dans, sa belle, dans sa belle famille avec euh, Laban, euh, son, son beau-père. Et là, il se prépare à rencontrer à nouveau son, son frère et euh, il se rend compte que euh, le... il se rend compte que le... eh bien, effectivement, que le que pendant toute la nuit, alors qu'il a envoyé en avant eh bien, son, le, le troupeau, eh bien, la il se bat avec quelqu'un, voilà. et à tel point qu'à un moment, son, sa hanche est débloquée, et au matin, euh, il, continue, il, est, il continue à se battre, et il demande la bénédiction de l'homme avec lequel il s'est battu, et c'est là où il apprend que c'est contre Dieu qu'il s'est battu, et reçoit le nom, un nom qui est ce nom d'Israël. C'est vraiment, quand nous regardons à la peinture en elle-même, et plus spécifiquement sur la relation entre les deux combattants, It, it almost looks like a dance. Uh, we, we can see that uh, there are, um, there are um, what, what can I say? They are, uh, they, are, they are wrestling with their fist. Uh, you can see on the, on the right side, the, the pile of, uh, of clothes uh, that belongs most likely to Jacob. And on, on here, on the feet of, uh, of Jacob, you can see uh, what, uh, the envelope of, uh, of a sword that must maybe belonged To, to, to the angel. So there is something about that, uh, about that relationship between the two is that in order to fight properly, they had to abandon whatever they had. Hein, on peut voir là dans ce combat qui est marquant, c'est effectivement le fait qu'ils aient abandonné leur, leur, leurs affaires et qu'ils euh, se battent à main nue. Il y a quelque chose d'un combat qui est euh, tout à fait euh, singulier. Et qui, et, qui, et qui rappelle et qui, est, et qui dit en tout cas un certain dépouillement pour pouvoir rentrer dans, cette, dans ce combat. And the way they are wrestling with each other almost looks like a dance. And that's really interesting because when you look at other um, piece of art, we can see that the, the way the artist thought about that fight between uh, Jacob and the angel, They thought it in, in a completely different way. I can just show you quickly because this one, this one I have, I have something. And what I say, what's marquant in this image is that it's the posture of Jacob and of Lange that resembles almost to a dance. And I want just to say how the other artists, if si the si truc me permet, can uh, treat this ce, ce sujet. Voilà. For instance, if you take here uh, something, something from Gustave Moreau. This painting from Gustave Moreau, you can see that Jacob almost fights against something that is completely way, way stronger than him. And uh, it's almost like he was uh, fighting against nothing. And uh, uh, I don't know if we can have something different, something else. Here is something like uh, this is like from, from Rembrandt. And uh, the, the angel is clearly above him. So yeah, it's really different. And I can't see, oh yeah, here it is. I was looking for something, way to close this thing. Yes. And um, I don't know if I have another, um, another example here. Um, yeah, but just to, sh just to say that there are, there were, there are different ways to, to think this, uh, this dance, this, uh, this fight. And the, the, the choice that uh, Delacroix has done is to represent it like this way. Here we can see a prepar preparatory uh, uh, drawing for the painting. Uh, donc, uh, alors, comme j'ai pu le montrer, on a vu dans, chez Moreau, par exemple, le, le fait que l'homme le, uh, soit complètement uh, dépassé par la force de l'ange. 
Et euh, alors qu'ici, effectivement, ça ressemble beaucoup plus à une danse. C'est un travail préparatoire, un dessin préparatoire qui a été fait par Delacroix. Et euh, ce qui est intéressant, c'est justement ce côté-là de, de prise au sérieux. C'est-à-dire que le, 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 la manière dont Jacob a de se battre, eh bien, l'ange la prend au sérieux. Il ne fait pas semblant. Uh, what I just said in English, in French, was that when we look at this, at this, this picture, and we can see it also in the painting itself, in this fight, we can see that the angel takes seriously the effort of Jacob during this fight. And even though the angel is supposed to be strong, contrary to the, uh, to the, uh, to the painting of Gustave Moreau, we have, uh, they look like they are equal. And, uh, and, that's and that's really interesting. And some people interpret this, the, the gesture of taking the, the, the leg of Jacob as the point before The hip of Jacob uh, gets broken during this fight. Les commentateurs, les commentateurs de, 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 cette, de ce tableau disent que la, la manière, le, le geste qu'il a de saisir la, la jambe de, de Jacob, qu'à l'ange de saisir la jambe de Jacob, c'est juste, juste avant le, le fait qu'il lui, lui casse la, la, il lui démette la hanche. Voilà. Yeah. So, fight. We are talking about the fight. And that's interesting also because we, we will see in the reflection later on what uh, it can mean uh, to us. I'm going to go back to the actual uh, painting. Yes. Then we can see if we up, zoom out. And when you, when you get inside the, the chapel, and really I recommend for the French people, French speaking people, to go to that chapel and see, and see it. What's really, uh, what really helps is to, is to see that when you, first, when you see the, the painting, you, you see the fighters, but quickly afterwards, you, 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 you see, you see uh, these huge uh, trees. So I'm going to say a few words about them. These, these trees, they are, they are oaks. And, and uh, these oaks, we, can, uh, we know that they, they can remind us about the, the oaks of Mambre. Uh, which is uh, in, the, in this scene where Abraham and, uh, and Sarah are, uh, are welcoming three strangers and learning that they, re they will receive some benediction from God through the coming of, uh, of a newborn son of, or, or, or some descendants. And, uh, and here also, maybe this, uh, this, this, uh, this painting can help us uh, see that in this fight, there is some fecundity, there is something that, can, that comes out of this fight. And, uh, and these trees, and you can see that these trees, they look, they are, they are not straight, uh, they are banded, and, they, and, the, and the shape, especially these two, the, the, the first two here, they look a lot, a lot like the, the positions of uh, Jacob and the angel, and uh, like, The whole nature around them was reflecting the fight that Jacob has with his angel, and most likely the fight that Jacob has within himself. So it's interesting to see that we have two levels of reality, well, even three, the reality inside Jacob, the reality of this fight of Jacob with the angel, and the and a third reality that is uh, this uh, the way the whole nature is touched by uh, this uh, fight. En français, quelques mots, le, on, a, on a un peu dézoomé, on voit ici euh, trois, trois, trois arbres. Ces arbres, ce sont des, euh, ce sont des, des chaînes, euh, et par exemple, ça peut nous faire penser aux chaînes de Membré euh, dans un épisode de la vie d'Abraham et Sarah, où, où c'est justement autour de ces, euh, ces chaînes-là qu'ils qu font l'expérience de recevoir trois, trois hôtes, voilà, trois hommes, là encore, on, je ne sais pas si ce sont des anges, des, voilà, trois figures. Et, euh, et c'est dans ce contexte-là qu'ils vont apprendre la, la fécondité à laquelle ils, chacun, chacun d'eux est appelé. Eux qui sont pourtant vieux et stériles. Et, euh, et peut-être, eh dans, dans ce contexte de ce tableau, ça peut nous rappeler effectivement ben, la fécondité de ce, tabac, de, de ce, de ce combat. C'est-à-dire que cette, cette bataille euh, qui a lieu, eh bien, elle, elle porte en elle-même une fécondité. On verra aussi quel, quel sens ça peut avoir euh, après. Et, euh, et, et puis, effectivement, la forme elle-même de ces, de ces arbres reprend un peu la, la forme du, du combat, hein, la posture hein, de, entre, le, entre Jacob et l'ange, hein, notamment avec les, les, deux, les, deux, les deux chaînes qui se croisent euh, juste à côté. 
et, euh, et ça peut nous inspirer en tout cas pour, pour comprendre et voir, un petit peu, voir comment la, la nature elle-même reflète le combat qui a lieu entre Jacob et l'ange et sans doute ce combat entre Jacob et l'ange dit aussi un combat qui se passe à l'intérieur euh, de Jacob voilà et le dernier point, c'est ce, ce rameau d'olivier qui se trouve sur la gauche, on ne le voit pas très bien, mais ce, ce rameau d'olivier qui signifie la, la paix, qui, signifie aussi la, long, qui dit aussi l'onction de l'huile, eh bien, euh, voilà, peut, peut dire aussi justement, être, apporter un témoignage de la fécondité de, de ce combat. I just, I just said in French, so maybe it's difficult to see it, but the, the, tree, the tree on the left is an olive tree. And an olive tree, we know that it's, uh, the olive tree is a symbol of peace, With the, with the olive tree, we, use, we make oil that, is, that can be used for anointing. So very something, something related also to the promise of God to its people. And uh, it can also, also help us to think that this, uh, what happens between uh, Jacob and the angel has some consequence, has something to, to say, uh, that which, which can be positive. There is some fecundity, as I said earlier, Out of, this, out of this fight. And then third point in the, in the content of this painting, it could be the flock that we see here uh, uh, going. It's, uh, it's here on the, on the right side. And also we see it a little bit, but the, the picture is not really good here. So like they are really contouring, walking around. That's the scene that takes, pla takes place uh, here. And uh, Yeah, and the flock and the whole uh, livestock is composed, as the Bible said, uh, of uh, women, women, children, servants, and livestock. And so the whole uh, tribe, maybe tribe is much more <laughs> appropriate than livestock, the, the, the whole tribe of Jacob, everything that is descendants and also the, um, his properties, everybody is, is walking around. And I don't know if you remember, but what I, when I, what I said, what I said is that the, uh, the fl Jacob had his fight with uh, the angel of this man during the night. But before that, he had sent his people, uh, his, uh, his livestock and so on, in advance to see his brother Esau. And uh, so it's, it's surprising. It can be surprising to see that this scene here on the right side Is, is not, uh, it does not happen at the same time as the fight of, of Jacob. And uh, there is a, a clear choice on, on, uh, on behalf of, uh, of Delacroix to put at the same time, on the same picture, two different events that took part at different times. And most likely it has a, it has a meaning. Uh, uh, we have other, other examples in, uh, in different paintings. I'm thinking about uh, a painting of uh, In, uh, Saint Paul's, in the church Saint Paul Saint Louis of Delacroix with the Christ in the garden of uh, the, in the, in, in, yeah, in the garden just before its, uh, its passion. And, uh, and we can see at the same time the Christ, the Christ praying and people coming. But uh, here we, we, we have a real uh, discrepancy of, uh, of time. And maybe one of the interpretations we had uh, that I can make is that this fight, what happens during this fight, well, Jacob is not supposed to stick to that specific moment, but his life has to go on. And uh, by, by, by reflecting uh, these people walking together, uh, his flock, the, we can see the muttons, we can see uh, the lambs, we can see uh, the people walking. It, remind, it can remind us also that this fight is not uh, where the life of Jacob stops at. There is much more to live. And uh, maybe it can tell us also that in any fight, even, even though they are extremely important, life goes on. Dans ce, dans ce tableau, hein, on voit sur le côté droit un, un élément totalement anachronique, hein, qui est ce, le, le, le troupeau de Jacob, qui est le, le troupeau et puis la tri, toute la tribu de Jacob qui se, qui se déplace, hein, qui continue là, qui commence sur le côté droit, et puis qui continue aussi, euh, hop, juste, juste là, même si on ne le voit pas très bien, donc qui contourne toute cette scène de, de combat. Et ce que je trouve en tout cas intéressant dans la lecture, c'est que ça nous permet de voir que l'histoire de Jacob, ce combat de Jacob, là, dans, dans, malgré toute l'importance qu'il qu peut avoir dans sa vie, eh bien, la vie de Jacob ne s'arrête pas là. Voilà. Et, euh, et la vie continue. Et ça, ça, ça nous dit souvent que dans nos vies, dans nos existences, il peut y avoir ces moments un peu tendus où, où tout se cristallise dans une, soir, une sorte de combat. 
et, et ce combat, il vaut la peine d'être vécu. Jacob a passé une nuit entière à, à combattre, mais la vie continue. Voilà. Et ça, c'est euh, un, un saint un réalisme. Et saint et saïen. Voilà. Et. Yes. And uh, what can I say else? Yeah, so there, there is something new that is, that is waiting. We're waiting for something new to come. And the, maybe this, this flock and the tribe, the whole tribe together, say something about new that, uh, that comes out of this fight. And, uh, and one of the first things that comes out is this name that receives uh, Jacob, uh, the, because he receives a name that means that he, he, has he has fought with God himself, which is the name, he receives the name of Israel. Yes. So that was the main uh, main idea about that uh, about, about that uh, that painting. And really, I encourage you to, if you pass by Paris, to have a chance to look at it in real. It's uh, it's much uh, much much better, especially during his uh, recent uh, restoration. And maybe based on this painting, I would like to introduce a couple of uh, yes yeah, topics about that uh, topic about that uh, subject of identity. Voilà, donc comme je le disais, ça c'est ce tableau qui, qui vaut vraiment le coup d'être vu à, à Saint-Sulpice si vous passez à Paris. Euh, et, euh, et donc, ça, ce que je viens de dire, là, cette présentation-là disait un petit peu la, les différents éléments de, de, ce, de ce tableau. Et maintenant, je vais parler de, de, de quelque chose qui a trait à la, à la question de la, de la vocation et de, de, de l'identité, enfin, qui est le thème comme de, de ce week-end, euh, à, à travers trois points. Bon, je vais commencer en anglais, bien sûr. Um, the first thing about identity that, uh, that for me was uh, meaningful was uh, the, the first thing is that to, to talk about identity as a vocation. I don't know if uh, what was what was said uh, this morning about the vocation uh, identity in the Bible, but what what strikes me on the personal side now as a, as, a, as a person is that uh, how important ident uh, identity can be. But most, most of the time, it's an identity that has been labeled by oneself, which means uh, I am like I am a man, I am a, a citizen, I am uh, I'm French or things like this, something that I receive, but I saw that I make from me and uh, that I can choose. And we can see uh, many, many, uh, um, it, uh, it can be also like, um, important uh, topics such as ecology that's, uh, that can be used also as a way to define ourselves. And most of the time, these labels that we put on ourselves, uh, it's a label that can put us, that put the rest of the world at distance. And it's, uh, the identity is often seen as a way to exist in front of others and to have some consistency. And what I think really interesting in the Christian heritage is the fact that identity is also linked to a vocation. And when we think about ourselves, we can think also that, well, for, for instance, I'm, I'm Pierre Alexandre, which means that I have a name that I received, I received from my parents. I didn't choose my name. And uh, it's, I was called this way. And uh, the, same world, so the same word calling has also something to say we, about vocation, obviously. And uh, identity can be a call, it can be a vocation. And uh, we can, when we look at the different uh, vocation stories in the Bible, we, we can see all these people that received a new name. I'm thinking about Saint Peter, that was the once Simon. I'm thinking about all these men, Abraham, that becomes Abraham. Jacob, that, we, that, that, that receives the name, the beautiful name of uh, Israel. So where it's different about the fact that identity is being uh, brought up as a label that defines me in front of others is that identity can also be received. And that's what I try to say about this, uh, that uh, idea of, of vocation. Vocation is not something we choose. I, don't, uh, I didn't choose. Uh, out of myself, for instance, to be a Jesuit. That's something I believe, something that I, something that I heard, and that was also confirmed by uh, the different Jesuits and, uh, and, uh, and superiors that I had uh, in my religious life. So, and I think it's interesting because if we hear, if we think about identity as a vocation or as something that we receive, 
maybe we can be less stressed out by uh, the fact that uh, my identity can be in conflict with other identities or, or that I need to show all the time this specific identity. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's really important because identity has something to say about relationship. And that's, uh, I think that's the main idea of, uh, of this talk. And uh, especially if, it's, if it's, it is understood uh, as a vocation. Uh, and uh, the philosoph, uh, French philosopher Paul Ricoeur, which I really, really like, said that the, the, close, the shortest way from oneself to oneself is through others. And uh, the only way, and that's paradoxical, that's maybe something which is the most intimate inside me and which is identity, actually doesn't come from me. It comes from others. It comes from the fact that I'm a brother because I have a sister and, an, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a younger brother. It comes the fact from the fact that I am a son because I was born from a, my mother and my dad. It comes because I as, because I'm also a Jesuit, for instance, or because or, and all these things that I receive from others. And uh, maybe when when we think about the fact that this vocation has been received by others, maybe we can be a little, little bit less stressed out. And uh, uh, yes, so one of the thinking that you can have this afternoon and everything in, is in the booklet is that to try to reflect, but what are the relationships that have built me or what are the relationships that are building me? What, can I, what, what are the calls that I hear in my life and that can help me think about being someone else, to be about being someone, not someone else, but someone. Voilà, en français, rapidement, hein, le, une manière de, il y a plusieurs manières de penser la vocation. Il y a des choses sans doute qui ont été dites ce matin. Mais moi, une, 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 manière, une des choses qui me, qui me marque, en tout cas, c'est ce, euh, ce sujet, cette idée, en tout cas, que la, la vocation n'est pas seulement une étiquette qu'on se met soi-même pour exister en face d'autres et avoir un peu de consistance ou, ou se protéger euh, des autres, même si parfois c'est le cas. Mais justement, on peut aussi comprendre la vocation comme étant quelque chose comme une, une vocation, c'est-à-dire quelque chose qui nous vient de l'extérieur de nous-mêmes, quelque chose que l'on reçoit. Avec cette hypothèse que si on prend conscience que l'identité que l'on a, c'est aussi quelque chose qu'on a reçu de l'extérieur, qui, qui est lié aux relations qu'on a pu nouer les uns avec, avec d'autres personnes, eh bien peut-être qu'on peut être un peu moins tendu sur cette question de la, de la, de la vocation. Hein, et je disais par exemple que ben, on, peut se défaire, on se rend compte qu'on, de même que Jacob a reçu un nom, Hein, ce qui a été aussi le cas de Saint-Pierre euh, qui s'appelait euh, jadis Simon, Abraham qui s'appelait avant Abraham, eh bien, il y a toujours cette idée que qui on est eh bien, dépend aussi de cette relation euh, aux autres et qu'il y, y, y a un vrai enjeu à sentir cette, euh, ce lien avec, euh, avec d'autres. Voilà. Et, euh, et du coup, un, petit, un premier point de réflexion que je, je propose et qui se trouve dans le, dans le livret, hein, il n'y a même pas écouté, j'ai envie de dire, c'est simplement de se dire, mais quelles sont les relations qui m'ont construit ou qui me construisent encore et quels sont les, les appels que je sens dans ma vie Qu'est-ce qui, euh, qu qui me permet d'exister et, et Je faisais tout à l'heure allusion à, ce, à cette, cette belle ligne, à, ce beau, à cette belle citation de, de, du, du philosophe Paul Ricoeur qui dit que le chemin le plus court de soi-même à soi-même, eh bien, il passe par les autres. C'est parce que je suis capable... En fait, d'une certaine manière, enfin, l'identité qui est la chose la plus intime en moi, eh bien, elle passe par la médiation, par la relation à, à d'autres. Enfin, et, et il y a quelque chose d'extrêmement paradoxal, euh, et, même, et je crois même vertigineux, à se dire que ce qui décrit peut-être la chose la plus intime que l'on est en nous-mêmes, eh ça passe par d'autres. Et, et je trouve ça plutôt rassurant, personnellement. Euh, le... Another chose, another thing is that we we can say, and that's uh, most likely one of the things that will uh, that will come tomorrow in the conference uh, of uh, Brother Emmanuel Pisani. So let's say that I'm just preparing the ground. <laughs> it's just to say that uh, this painting tells us about something about identity. We said about vocation because Jacob receives a name, but what this picture with what this painting uh, depicts also is a fight yes is a, a wrestle and um, and that's that's interesting because as i said the identity that we have is not necessarily a peaceful issue uh, i think one of the trap concerning identity is to think that we only have one identity and i think that things always start to get uh, 
dirty when we focus on only one identity as a way to exist in front of others. And when we start to accept that we have many identities and that sometimes these identities can be in conflict, well, it is at that time that maybe we can take a little bit of distance uh, concerning these identities. And as I said, what is interesting is that the le, combat le Jacob, as his name indicates, shows that the question of identity is also linked to a question of a combat et que tout n'est pas simple et que le, moi, ma propre identité en fait n'est pas n'est pas monolithique il y a plusieurs éléments j'ai toujours plusieurs identités je parlais de homme femme baptisé frère sœur mari fa, femme euh, épouse euh, citoyen et bien tout ça ça peut être aussi parfois en, en conflit et euh, et ce qu'on peut apprendre au cas de cette histoire c'est que Jacob ne, ne ne cherche pas à abandonner le, à abandonner ce conflit il, il combat jusqu'à la, toute la nuit et c'est comme ça qu'il reçoit ce, ce nom c'est à dire que même dans le, le conflit avec tout ce qu'il peut avoir de difficile il porte une certaine fécondité et, euh, et voilà et ça peut être l'occasion de, de se dire mais qu'est-ce qui, qu qui est en conflit dans toutes mes identités ou en moi-même qu'est-ce qui, qu qu qui bloque voilà, de manière très concrète hein, on peut dire là, dans cette situation sanitaire bah, la, la question d'être citoyen, pleinement citoyen et pleinement chrétien c'est-à-dire bah, de se dire bah, le lien entre des, des, des mesures sanitaires et également bah, l'exercice de notre foi et qui passe de manière concrète euh, par une dimension euh, ecclésiale et eh bien ça, ça a été clairement en tension et eh bien qu'est-ce que la tension en elle-même, qu'est-ce qu'elle qu qu a pu nous dire qu'est-ce qu'elle a pu manifester And just come back into this point in, in English. Uh, the, these tensions, these fights between identities within ourselves or with others, we can have many fights. But what I think this painting tells us is that we have to assume, we have to accept this fight. And Jacob did it, even though he was uh, <laughs> not the best man in the world, but he had the courage to stand during all night and to do this fight. And, most, and maybe it can help us to, to think that these tension, these difficulties that we can experience in our lives towards the, the different identities that we carry of the, our own person with others, well, there can be some fruits, there is some fecundity also from uh, this fight. So we don't have to, to try to avoid it, but we have to accept and try to see what, com what good can comes out of this fight. There is an unexpected fruitfulness, as I said. And one of the reflections that we can have we, could be what is in conflict with my identity, what needs to be unified. And then the last, uh, last point, pardon me because I'm way too long, so I'm going to try to, to be a, a bit quicker, is about vocation and dismissal. Uh, again, Paul Ricoeur uh, used this, uh, this idea of, uh, of vocation and dismissal by, by this quick sentence, vocation isola isolates, and dismissal connects. And when we think about it, any vocation, for instance, has something to do with being set apart as, as being really a singular uh, towards others. Uh, when we think about, for instance, well, the fact that to be, to be married is, uh, means that we have a specific status uh, towards the eyes of others. Uh, to be in the religious life or to be a priest It has, has also something that is that makes us extremely special, ex exactly as marriage or, or 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 the fact that we accept to be uh, to be single. Well, and what's interesting in here is that if we only focus on the singularity, on the on the uni on the fact that it's unique, we can lose the fact that this vocation is a call to be sent towards others. And uh, this dimension of relationship with others somehow needs to be taken into account when we talk about uh, vocation. Else, we can only seem, for instance, uh, I think the, the, the typical example is the one of the priest. Well, the man only as a priest and the things that is someone like a man of God or things like that, but he, he can also completely lose The whole purpose of this vocation, of this specific calling, is which is to be sent to others. And this is why uh, uh, Paul Ricoeur says that vocation isolates and dismissal connects, because in each identity, there is part of it which is something related to the person in particular, which is the vocation, 
but there is also in the same time a dismissal. The fact that we are sent, uh, dismissal like we have, that we have at the end of, uh, of the mass, uh, go in peace, mass is ended. Well, this, dimis, this dismissal means that the vocation itself in all its singularity has no meaning if it is not understood as the fact to be sent, yes. And uh, I think that in any vocation, whatever vocation that we have in our lives, we have to think the two in uh, these two aspects in the same time. And most of the time, I would say also that the relationship we have with others, it does verify, it does confirm or not this singular uh, calling that we can have, that we could have received. And uh, in the question that I asked, was I can ask how I can ask myself how my vocation is not a way of running away from the world, but that it, that it sends me out to bear fruits. And we can also want, uh, ask ourselves how does our identity send us back, not back to ourselves, but directs us to others. Encore une fois, quelques mots très rapides, je suis hyper en retard et je m'en excuse. Euh, le, la, vocation comme, la vocation et envoi, c'est un, un thème que utilise Delacroix, que utilise pardon, Paul Ricoeur, le, toujours ce même philosophe, et qui dit, en gros, la vocation isole et l'envoi euh, relie. Quelque chose comme ça, je n'ai plus la phrase. En, dans, et, et ce qui est intéressant, en fait, c'est que toute vocation, et on peut penser ça aussi comme identité, eh bien, a, a un côté extrêmement spécifique, quelque chose qui nous est dressé à nous-mêmes, le fait d'être marié, bah, effectivement, on a un statut, on a quelque chose de très, très particulier, ou évidemment religieux, religieuse, prêtre, etc., célibataire aussi, mais que tout ça n'a de sens que si, euh, eh bien, il y, a, il y a un envoi aussi. C'est-à-dire que la vocation elle-même, il n'y a, a pas de vocation pure qui serait une espèce de tatue, une, une étiquette qui nous viendrait du ciel, ou que sais-je, ou des hommes, mais elle n'a de sens que si on est, elle a un lien avec un envoi, un envoi avec des personnes, voilà, et que ce soit la fécondité d'une personne célibataire, d'un couple, d'une personne consacrée ou d'un prêtre, il y, a, il y a toujours cette question d'être envoyé auprès d'autres. Et d'une certaine manière, la qualité aussi de la relation et qu'on a d'être envoyé dans notre relation aux autres, dans le contexte de notre vocation, bien d'une certaine manière, ça vérifie aussi ce qui se vit euh, du point de vue de notre vocation. Et donc, une des pistes de réflexion que je proposais pour cet après-midi, c'était de se demander ben, comment ma vocation, mais c'est vrai pour les religieux, religieuses, etc., mais aussi euh, pour tout baptiser, mais de se dire comment le fait, la, la vocation qui est propre à chacun, ce n'est pas une manière de s'échapper du monde, mais au contraire, de me tourner vers ce monde et d'y porter du fruit. Voilà. Et ça, c'est un, un vrai enjeu de se dire, mais comment euh, mon identité ne me ramène pas à moi-même comme ma petite manière à moi d'être mise à part, euh, d'être spécifique, d'avoir de, des vêtements euh, très, très, très... Très, très, qui me singularise comme je le veux pour pouvoir bien montrer au monde que je ne suis pas comme eux, mais surtout de se dire, mais comment le sens que ça a, c'est comment ça nous met en lien et en relation avec d'autres. Et la peinture, hein, évidemment, par le lien entre le combat de Jacob, qui pourrait être, on va dire, sa vocation, et l'envoi avec le, la, la, la tribu, c'est aussi un angle d'analyse, en tout cas, qu'on peut avoir par rapport à ça. Je veux qu'on me parle. Voilà, il y a un, oui, un call, universal call to holiness, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and, and I, I was trying to, I just said in French, the painting itself can also help us to think at the same time vocation and dismissal, as we can see that on the left side, the fight between uh, Jacob and the angel, and on the right side, the whole tribe walking. And the, as I said earlier, Jacob is not called to stay all his life fighting an angel or, or, or maybe to meditate uh, uh, during all his life about what happened with that angel. It is not his call. His call is to be with his tribe and to walk towards his, uh, to his, his brother uh, Esau for reconciliation. And uh, this is why we cannot think uh, vocation without the fact that this vocation is always a way to be sent to the world, whatever this vocation is. All right, and uh, so I will conclude uh, saying that, yes, we, what we saw during this, uh, maybe a way too long presentation, is the fact that we can think about identity as, some, as, being, as being linked uh, to, um, to a vocation. We, there, is a vocation that we, there is an identity that we choose to develop ourselves, and there is also a vocation, uh, an identity that we receive exactly as a vocation. This, uh, the, this, identity, as a, this identity as a vocation help us think and remember us 
help us to remember that identity doesn't have any meaning if there is no link with others, with any uh, way to elaborate this, uh, this, this identity. But then we can see also with the painting that it is up to Jacob to answer to this identity by fighting. And same thing also, we receive identities, but also we are called to give freely, to use our freedom to give an answer to that, uh, to that identity. And this can, this can imply some uh, fights, some struggles, and uh, I think that the painting itself reflects uh, properly this, uh, this aspect. But again, with the flock and uh, the fight uh, being at the same time, it remembers us also that any vocation is linked to a way to be sent to others. And we have to, to keep uh, this dimension of our way and how we serve others in, uh, in the way we think our own identity. And uh, I finished by saying that identity is fruitful only when it is open to others. And uh, I think most likely it's a, a good way to, to verify the quality and maybe to see the challenges that we still have with our identities is to measure, to see how it is a way to be open to others or not. Thank you very much. I'm just going to give a, a quick conclusion in French too. Voilà, donc pour, pour conclure, je dirais voilà que le, cette question de l'identité enfin, qu'on a vu avec le tableau de, de, de la croix, c'est très lié avec le, la dimension du, euh, eh bien, du combat. C'est un combat enfin, sur une vocation qui est reçue, une identité qui est reçue, pas uniquement comme une étiquette qu'on se met, mais une, 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 quelque chose que l'on reçoit euh, d'autres personnes. Et cette dimension-là, elle se passe forcément avec des combats, avec des difficultés, mais elle est toujours lié au rapport à l'autre et effectivement comme ce, ce thème de vocation et d'envoi et eh bien toute identité d'une certaine manière elle est fruitful, elle est féconde à, à partir du moment où elle, elle nous ouvre à d'autres donc c'est sans doute dans nos vies et eh bien une manière d'avoir bah, une certaine humilité aussi par rapport à cette vocation elle va avoir cette identité et aux différentes identités que l'on a car on voit bien que bah, voilà, c'est toujours en, en chemin et en construction wow Thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, sorry if I was too, too long. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Pierre. Right. Unfortunately, I, I, cannot, uh, I cannot stay way too long much because I'm already late. Uh, uh, you, you can find different things in the, in the booklet. I think that people are showing it, so they don't hesitate. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and if you have specific questions, also feel free to talk with the uh, Livingstones uh, Paris for they can give also my contact for more uh, for more more details. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Je file. Je suis hyper en retard pour les ordinations. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous. Buenas tardes a todos. Um, alors, uh, it's, uh, everybody understand? Uh, tout le monde m'entend? Yes, just, so not, not fin, just to finish now, so thank you a lot, Pierre Alexandre, and um, just to, now it's time to, to, to have uh, this reflection about the identity. I think it was very interesting what, uh, what he said, and so you have all in the booklet, you have uh, all in, in Uh, paper or in a WhatsApp group or for, for email. So each one you can go back and to read this in English. And thank you very much. Oui, je l'ai. Parfait, merci. You had to go. So you have uh, the, 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 what she said to the reflection, you have it in the, in the booklet, page 11. 11. Uh, for the workshop, you have you, you all is here, so you can have in English, in French, or in Italian. So, I think it's very it's very useful for each one. Thank you, and uh, see you at half past cinq, uh, uh, cinco y media para the sharing group. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.